Uh. As you can see, getting that shot, I would have got my feet completely soaking. Luckily, I bought these. New Wellingtons. Um, although they're only short ones, so I can't go that deep. Um, but they're doing the trick. And now I can, when I'm traversing rocks and stuff, I can step in rock pools and go through streams, and it's a lot easier. So yeah, that's going to move me on to the video today, which is 10 tips for shooting seascape photography. And what I just filmed was one of them. Was get yourself some wellies or waterproof shoes or anything like that so you can get in rivers and streams and you know the sea and everything not only for the benefit of just you know being able to walk through them and not getting your feet wet because every time I come to this beach I get my feet wet every single, if you watch every one of my videos my feet are wet um, but you can also do really cool things with long exposures by actually being in like a river um, because you get the water flowing past you instead of by you and when it throws past you it looks so much better and tip number two is going to be a really quick one um, I have this problem every time I come to the beach every single time and I never have a little handy cloth with me like I do today if a wave hits a rock or anything it will come up and it will splash a camera and too often the sensor on this camera that you're on now has actually taken some you know, seawater in, in it because it's uh, mirrorless so the, the sensor is actually exposed and I was switching lenses and I, didn't think, and I forgot to you know, like cover the body so the sensor got really wet and yeah, you're going to get splashes all over your camera so definitely get yourself some cloths and clean off your camera every time the next one is very important and that is tide times you have to have to check the tide times. Um, I can't express it enough because the difference between high tide and low tide on a beach is massive. Like you can have, if it's fully high tide, you can have 20% of the beach, or even like 1%. And when it's really low, you can have 100%. So it makes a difference. So really check your tide times. Just search up the beach you want to go to, and then search on tide time after that, and then you'll get it. And try and aim for. Like low tide at sunset or low tide at sunrise or if you want to go to a beach um, and you want to shoot uh, high tide then you know do it vice versa but I definitely recommend checking the tide times and also check if it's coming in or out because you don't want to like, climb across a load of rocks and then you look back and your paths disappear time of year time of year makes a huge difference a huge huge, huge difference the only time you can shoot beach photography in uh, summer is if you go to a beach that you have to walk to you have to walk far to there's no access there's no accessibility nothing like that and the best time of year to shoot seascapes or going to the beach like I am is definitely is definitely in the winter or the autumn months or anything like that any cold really cold days uh, definitely recommend going to the beach then do not go in the summer because this beach will be covered in people and it's just not worth it, it really isn't people just getting the shots everywhere and it's just, it's not even worth it just don't, I just recommend don't do it in the summer unless you go do some sea cliffs or something like that just don't shoot beaches, I promise you and if you don't already, you're going to have to have a set of ND filters which, uh, the things I've got on my camera which are tilted they're pretty much just black glass, like limo glass and they have certain uh, intensities like ND8 is the best one I have but you can get like ND10 when it's completely black and what it essentially does is that you go, it goes over your lens and it makes it darker so you can it pretty much simulates the camera in darker lighting so you can take longer exposures and that's what, how you and longer exposures is how you get that really nice pattern in the water and it doesn't look real um, I'm trying to teach people who I've never shot long exposures before, so they don't know what it is, and they're always like wondering, like when I first tried to find out how do people get that really nice smooth pattern in the water, and it doesn't look real. I was like, what the hell is it? But yeah, that's what it is. You need ND filters for that. Uh, so get yourself a set of ND filters because you're going to need it. But you're going to need a polarizer. Uh, that's because you don't. You probably won't need a polarizer if it's an overcast day. 
but you're going to need a polarizer because let's say if you have glare on the water um, you're not going to be able to get rid of it if you don't have a polarizer if you've got a polarizer you just spin the filter and um, the glare goes so if the sun is beaming down on the sea you spin that polarizer and it all just goes away most people have a wide angle lens but I'm definitely going to recommend getting some wide angle lens wide angle lenses are much better uh, for seasick frog feet than uh, a telephoto so yeah pick yourself up a, cam uh, a lens within like 15mm to like 25 you don't want to go any less wide than that or you're not, be you're not going to be able to get the shots that you need because uh, if you want to get a grand vista of beach you can going to fit it all in or if there's a rock in front of you and you can't get any further back you're going to need to fit that in if you go to a beach for the first time I recommend scouting the beach before you actually go there and do a proper photo shoot because you need to scout the beach at low tide and high tide to see you know what there is because there could be a really nice rock, uh, rock at low tide that you know about you want to go shoot sunset there so definitely just take your dog out go onto the beach you know scout out walk, walk around at high tide and low tide because there's a certain beach I can't go to right now because it has to be high tide there's pillars sticking out of the water from an old pier and it has to be high tide for the water to come in and out of those pillars so yeah I definitely recommend scouting out a beach before luckily I've been to all these beaches that I always go to so I know what's there at low tide and what's there at high tide and this beach I'm currently on right now I cannot shoot uh, the sunset if it's high tide this is a massive hill on the way now it's not really worth coming to the beach at midday it's worth coming sunrise or sunset so you need to check uh, get an app and I'll put one on the screen right now of which one I recommend and I use uh, which uh, says where the sun's going to set and where the sun's going to rise you need to uh, make sure there's no landscape in the way or nothing like that because you want the sunset on the horizon and you'll never get sunset or sunrise setting there on the horizon so you need to go then when, the, when, when you can clearly see the sun on the horizon um, sometimes if you're lucky you'll get both um, but yeah, not often so always check uh, on a sun path and what I do is I always arrive two hours early before sunset so I can scout out potential compositions and you know get ready just in case anything goes wrong you know if you get stuck anything like that it's always saved me coming two hours later I mean earlier so yeah that's a bit it that's a bit it that's about it um, hope you enjoyed the video guys I'm going to end this video with a, uh, the sunset shoot so yeah stay tuned for that what well, for you it'll be like in a second